Hi everyone, all my dear loving students. Today we are going to do a very beautiful short poem, The Laburnum Top. This is your English teacher, Soma ma'am. Today we are doing the second poem of class 11 from the book Hornbill, The Laburnum Top. This poem is written by Ted Hughes. Now, this is the poet Edward James Hughes. He was an English poet and he is very well known as a children's writer. Critics frequently rank him as one of the best poets of his generation and one of the 20th century's greatest writers. He served as Poet Laureate from 1984 until his death. You can see on the right hand side the picture of Hughes, James Hughes. Now these are the two things which you will read, see the pictures. These are the two things what you are going to read about today in this beautiful poem. This is the Laburnum tree with yellow flowers and this is the bird goldfinch bird okay now let's see let's get into the introduction about the poem now here in this poem the laburnum top this is written by ted hughes and it is about a repaying relationship between the laburnum tree and the goldfinch bird. The tree is yellow, silent and death-like and is made alive by the bird and her young ones. The yellow bird has her shelter on the tree where she finds, uh, she feeds her young ones. But as soon as the bird leaves to fly in the sky, the tree becomes silent and death-like again. So this is the gist. The whole poem is just given in this few lines. And just looking at this picture, it seems as if yellow is the favorite color of the poet. Isn't it, children? Yeah, we also feel like this, that the yellow is the favorite color of the poet. Now, this is the theme of the poem. The first three lines of the poem impress upon the reader the stillness of the laburnum tree. A tree which looks absolutely lifeless is how it will be made alive with the presence of the bird that you will see in the poem. Then what happens, a small goldfinch comes and the tree bursts with movement and sound. The bird's family lodges in the thickness of the tree. The goldfinch enters the tree's thickness to feed her young ones and then flies away. This is the theme of the poem. The tree becomes silent once again after the bird leaves. See in the picture you can see how the bird is feeding her babies and when after feeding the bird flies away, the tree again becomes silent. The poet has used imagery of sound and movement to show the tree coming alive. So, in the poem, you will see that how beautifully the poet has brought all these imageries in front of you. Now, let's read the poem. The laburnum top is silent, quite still in the afternoon, yellow September sunlight. A few leaves yellowing, all its seeds fallen. Now, these are the word meanings which are given at the bottom of the page, laburnum the meaning of that that is the name of a tree that is given in the meaning now the explanation of these lines in the above lines the poet says 
that he saw a laburnum tree whose leaves were yellow. The tree's top is still and silent. In the daytime of September month, it is autumn season, remember students, and all the seeds of the tree had fallen. The poet has used the word yellow for leaves and sunlight. So yellow he has, you get question on this point that how many times the poet has used the word yellow. So the color yellow the poet had used for leaves and for sunlight. Yellow symbolizes silence, death and beauty. He describes the whole scene of the tree with this color. So these are the next lines. Till the goldfinch comes with a twitching chirrup, a suddenness, a startlement at a branch end, then sleek as a lizard and alert and abrupt, she enters the thickness and a machine starts up of chitterings and a trimmer of wings and trillings. So here are the word meanings which you must write down in your copy for your vocabulary enrichment. In this way only your word, vocab word storage will increase in your memory. Goldfinch, twitching, chirrup, settlement, abrupt, chitterings, trimmer of wings, trillings, trembles, Thrills. These words I am pronouncing just to make you all clarify the pronunciation so that you all also should learn the correct pronunciation of these words. Now the explanation of those lines. A goldfinch bird comes to end and death like scene of the tree and makes a sudden chirrup sound. The bird while being rapid, alert and precautions like a lizard sits on the branches of the tree. As she moved towards the thickness of the branch, her younger ones started chirruping and doing vibrations with wings, making a sound like a machine. Because of the movement of the bird and her young ones, the tree starts to shake and thrill. The poet has given two opposite scenarios of the tree. The tree first being like death and still and then giving life and shelter to bird and her young ones. So when things get, get associated with live things, things which you can move with, then they also give the attributions of life. The whole, now this is the poem again, the whole tree trembles and thrills. It is the engine of her family. She strokes it full, then flirts out to a branch end, showing her barred face identity mask. Then, with airy delicate whistle chirrup whisperings, she launches away towards the infinite and the laburnum subsides to empty. Now these are the word meanings, flirts out, stalks, barred, airy, whistle, subsides. This is the explanation of those last lines. The laburnum tree and the goldfinch bird is the engine of her family. She provides food to her young ones and moves to the other branch end. Her dark colored striped face is visible as her body is yellow colored and hides behind the yellow leaves of the tree. You get a lot of question from this part also, this barred face. This is the striped face. After reaching the end of the branch, the bird makes a sweet chirruping sound just like whispering and flies away towards the infinite sky. 
it again makes the laburnum tree silent and like death so you see when the in the presence of the bird and the uh, the small birds being fed the tree gets life back and after that the life is over so it's a wonderful observation by the poet and he has put it in the words uh, color of words now see these are the literary devices used in this poem alliteration alliteration what is alliteration previously also we have done this in our previous video in our previous poem alliteration is the repetition of the consonant sound at the beginning of two or more consecutive words the instances of alliteration in the poem are as follows september sunlight tree trembles and on the right hand side you get more examples of alliteration calm and carefully caught car steve saved seven seagulls brain bought black brawlies what do you notice about each that each word begins with the same sound so this literary devices also children you must write down in your copy so meanings you should write down you should write down the literary devices also that will help you to remember in your future before your exam now the second literary device used over here is simile so what is simile simile is the comparison between two things using like uh, or as sleek as a lizard this is what you get in the poem sleek as a lizard what is the metaphor used metaphor simile already i have explained in my previous video an indirect comparison between two things generally a quality is compared what is the metaphor over here she enters the thickness and a machine starts up the noise created by the movement of the birds is compared to the machine's noise now this see more are there it is the engine of a family showing her bard face identity mask so this mask this bard stripes were like identity for the bird identity mask see on the right hand side i have tried to give a few colorful examples of metaphor and simile he eats like a horse as slippery as uh, these are the similes on the top you have the similes and down you have the metaphor he eats like a horse as slippery as an eel he is an he is as quiet as a mouse she swims like a fish See down metaphor. Julia is a chicken. Time is money. Our teacher is a walking encyclopedia. He was a lion in the fight. So these are the similes and metaphors. There's so many examples I have given just to clear the thing in your mind and get the things registered in your mind. Now the next person, next uh, literary device is personification. the attribution of personal nature characteristics to someone non human that is personification somebody is not human being but some human qualities are attributed to that thing the whole tree trembles and thrills how can a tree shake of its own or feel thrill that is only the feeling of Uh, people of the author who was watching the whole scenario or the birds trembling and the trees are uh, trans uh, are being attributed to the tree okay now next you have transferred epithet the figure of speech where the adverb is transferred to another noun her bard face identity mask is a transferred epithet okay in this poem on the right hand side i have tried to give few examples of personification see giving a human trait to something non human the leaves danced in the wind the angry saw was visible my heart was competing with my head okay are you getting me students 
Now, so here I have tried to give more examples of transferred epithet so that it gets clear in your mind. In this figure, an epithet is transferred from a word to which it properly belongs to some other word closely connected with it. He stood upon the dizzy cliff. He passed a sleepless night. Okay. See, the cliffs are called as dizzy. Though the person who was standing on the cliff was feeling dizzy, but that dizziness has been given uh, attributed to cliff. Cliff means a mountain corner. He passed a sleepless night. Night was not sleepless. The person who was trying to sleep was sleepless. On the right hand side, you have more examples. I admit it was a funny day. The girl's experience was fun, not the day. A careless match, a scornful eye, the weary road, wide-eyed amazement. So these are more examples. Now these are few of the questions which you need to know. Uh, if you want to know the answers of this, because these are very frequently asked questions from this poem. I have given the questions over here. If you want to know the answers, you please let me know in the comment section. And you should answer them in a very short way in the comment section. You should s uh, tell the answers in a very short way in the uh, comment section of this video. Okay, so that's all about this poem. I hope you have understood the poem and you have understood, you have felt the feelings and the emotions of the poet and the bird and you have enjoyed reading this poem. After watching the video, it is compulsorily, you must read the poem again and again and uh, this video was presented by your matchless mentor, your English teacher, Soma ma'am. So till meet you again in my next video. Till then, bye and have a nice day ahead.